I want to speak to you tonight on the four stages of backsliding. Now, I'm looking at the congregation tonight, and, and I tell you, I feel like I'm a little bit, uh, might, might seemingly have missed it, but I thought about this. If there was ever a time when you love the Lord Jesus Christ more than you love him at this moment, if there was ever a time when he meant more to you, when prayer was sweeter to you, when worship was more real to you, when your service was more effective to the Lord, then to that degree, you have somewhat backslid. We all have to consider this. This is something that isn't for my brother or my sister. It's me, O Lord, standing in the need of this message. And I believe tonight that when we realize how much God loves us, and we realize all that the devil hates and doesn't want us to have, we'll find ourselves getting off of those four stages of backsliding. I want to look at 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. 2 Timothy chapter 4. If you're glad to be here tonight, say amen. Oh, don't we feel his presence here tonight. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 10. The Bible says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. Father, tonight, help us to realize your love for us, and help us, Lord, as we uh, hear the word of the Lord tonight, God, whether now or whether later, to bring back to our remembrance about the four stages of backsliding, that we will be victorious as we sung tonight, victory in Jesus, and we'll give you all the praise. And everybody said amen, and everybody said amen. Now, we find mentioned tonight a man by the name of Demas, a man by the name of Demas. He had never had, Paul had never had a more promising associate. According to our study, he was a young, aggressive, and enthusiastic worker for the Lord. At one time, he was on fire for God, burning with a radiant love for Jesus. Maybe even in Paul's mind, he was grooming him to take over after Paul had been called to heaven as he knew he would be. But something went awry. The tentacles of the world had slowly but firmly wrapped themselves around the heart of this young convert. The fire had turned to ashes. Demas had turned to disappointment. The only thing left to say about Demas was what might have been. Demas had joined the ranks of the backsliders. And there are four stages as we look at Demas' life to any backslider. Four stages that Demas went through to become a backslider and to fall away from the Lord and all that he has for him. If you were a backslider, or if you know a backslider, or if you, God forbid, become a backslider, and some of you will unless you get on guard, you will have gone through these four stages. Let me give them to you tonight. Stage number one is the stage of devotion. You see, a backslider doesn't start out in the honky-tonk. Isn't that an old boomer word right there? <laughs> a backslider starts out really in devotion. That's the first stage of devotion. You see, in our text tonight, it speaks uh, not only of a present failure, but it hints as well or implies a past faithfulness. He once was with Paul. Go to Philemon uh, chapter 1, verse 23 and chapter in verse 24, he once, somebody say he once, was with Paul, but for some reason had deserted. And Philemon, uh, there's only one chapter in Philemon, but in verse 23, uh, it says, There salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, Marcus, and Trachinus, Demas, and Lucas, my fellow laborer. So here we have Demas mentioned. What does the scripture say, church? He it was a what? He was a fellow laborer. Paul describes Demas as one of his fellow laborers. The word there literally means to work with or to work beside. There was a time when Paul and Demas were laborers together. There was a time when Demas was sold out to God. If you study the book of Acts, you find that Paul did not just choose anybody to be his fellow laborer. He was pretty choosy and pretty picky about who at times he'd been known to send people away that he did not deem were fully able to the work. But Demas was one of those elevated ones who was 
considered by Paul to be a fellow laborer. He and Paul worked together in their duty. They preached together. You see, Paul's primary job was preaching. And so Demas obviously joined in that. He was a preacher, we can surmise. Paul and Demas preached together. Uh, they planted together. You know, Paul was a church planter. And so by default, Demas uh, was a church planter. I mean, Demas, uh, he was uh, uh, devoted in preaching and, and in church planting and, and in praying uh, because uh, men uh, that work together and labor together uh, also pray together. No question that, that Demas was part of those prayer meetings uh, with Paul. And wouldn't you have loved to have been part of a prayer meeting uh, with the Apostle Paul uh, and Demas? Demas uh, was part uh, of uh, that supernatural uh, uh, connection with Paul. They were together in duty. They were together in doctrine. You see, Demas would not have gone with Paul if he was not an affirmation of Paul's doctrine. So Demas was doctrinally correct. He could tell you the 14 articles of faith of the International Pentecostal Holiness Church. He was a fundamentalist. Demas would not have gone with Paul if his doctrine was not correct. And they were also together not only in doctrine and in duty, but in danger. Have you read some of those stories where Paul got in trouble? And was sometimes stoned, sometimes thrown in prison. Well, Demas also was in trouble as well. Uh, Demas was willing uh, to be hungry at times for the cause of Christ. Demas was willing to be thrown in prison. Uh, Demas was willing to be persecuted. Uh, so please understand when we talk about Demas, uh, he was devoted to God, uh, on fire for God, uh, a fellow laborer for God, uh, and all to be on fire, all to be all in, uh, all to be devoted uh, to this Lord of ours, our king. You are my king. Are you devoted tonight? Give him a hand of praise here tonight. If anybody's devoted. There's the first stage is devotion. The second stage of backsliding is what I call the stage of decision because a man is only or a woman is only a sum of their previous decisions. You are tonight the consummate expression of your decisions. And if Demas had left Paul somewhere, he began to make some wrong choices and began to decide. You see, the battle is between the ears. Uh, look at Colossians chapter 4. We see a different Colossians chapter 4 and verse 14. We see something here very subtle. Uh, it says, Luke, the beloved physician, and Demas greet you. Something changed because in Philemon, Demas was called a what? Fellow laborer. But in this scripture, He's not mentioned as a fellow laborer. He's just mentioned as Demas. So something must have begun to change. Paul must have sensed a change that maybe he was uh, beginning to wax a little cool uh, in his devotion and duty and prayer. And you think uh, that backsliding happens overnight. Uh, no, sir. It is a series of decisions, a progress of events. Uh, it is a downward, gradual, slippery slope. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 14, which I don't have in the notes there, but Proverbs 14 and 14 says the backslider in heart is filled with his own ways. Uh, backslide begins when your ways begin to take precedent over God's ways and it starts not in somebody else not in some preacher the backsliding begins to start in your heart I'm reminded of a story I read about a young man who was propositioning his girlfriend he said now honey I love you I'm not wealthy like Jerome Green I don't have a yacht like Jerome Green and I know I don't have a convertible or precious jewels and fine clothes like Jerome Green. But I want you to know, honey, I love you. The girl thought for a moment and she said, well, I love you too, honey. But who is Jerome Green? <laughs> Demas was beginning to say, I love you, Jesus. But what about this world? The world began to woo him with its attraction, with its song and its ways. You see, Demas knew he could not serve two masters, but he knew he would serve one, and one would have to go. The Greeks had a game. When a man would get on the back list of two horses and ride them as far as he could, but eventually the two horses would split off into different directions, and then the man had to make a decision. And see, Demas was at a stage of decision somewhere in that journey, where once he only looked once at the world, now he looked twice at the world. The pull of the world was getting harder and harder to resist. 
Whenever you begin to look twice at this world, you have started down the road of decision. I read about one of those new steam line trains that was uh, rushing over the rails at an unbelievable rate of speed. A passenger asked the conductor, does, do, does, this train, does this train stop at the next town? The conductor said, no, sir, it doesn't even hesitate. That's the way I drive to work, by the way. My friend, when you begin to hesitate on your church attendance, when you begin to hesitate on the second look to something that's not really godly, maybe not very sinful, and I'll get to more of that in just a moment, we cannot hesitate. We must be all in. We've got to go forward 100 miles an hour. We've got to give it all that we've got. Because if we begin to hesitate in our devotion, our duty, our prayer, if we hesitate one minute, to, then we will begin to go down that road. You see, at first for Demas, it was all, listen to this, it was all of Jesus and none of the world. But then Demas thought all Jesus and no world makes a dull life. So then it became, listen, instead of all of Jesus and none of the world, it became mostly Jesus and partly world. But then it went further. It went from partly Jesus and mostly world uh, to none of Jesus and all of the world. You see, we've got to be careful about that. You see, we've got to make a decision. It came down to a decision. What a man or woman is today is because of the decisions they made yesterday. And what a man will be tomorrow is determined by the decisions that we make today. The great men of the Bible were men and women uh, who made great decisions. Uh, one man said, uh, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Uh, nothing's coming up. Nothing's coming between it. Uh, another man said, we, you, we may burn, uh, but we will not bow. We've made it. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Oh, Moses told Pharaoh, not a hoof will be left behind. We're going to take our young. We're going to take our old. We're going to take the cattle. We're going to take our gold. And we're getting out of Egypt. We've decided to follow Jesus. Can you say amen? Demons Demas' future destiny was determined by faulty decision. And instead of saying, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, he began to say, I, I, had decided, I had decided to follow Jesus, but I have turned back. You see, there was the stage of devotion. Then there was the stage of decision. And then came the worst stage, another stage, the stage of desertion. The stage of desertion. Where Demas has forsaken me. He loved the world. That's important to understand what we, what we mean by the world. It doesn't mean that we are not to love the beauty of this world, the Grand Canyon and the, and the beach and, 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 and praise God, hole number nine at Wedgwood. I mean, it's, it's not anything wrong with that. I mean, just to look at the beauty of the sunrise and the sunset. If you ever watched the movie Fiddle on the Roof, you must watch it. Very, very powerful movie. Sunrise, Sunset is one of the songs they sing there. There's nothing wrong to enjoy the Niagara Falls and, and the beauties of this world. Because when, when I see, when I, I'll drive to work, and, and, and it's just like today, the sun's shining. And I feel my father in the beauty of his creation. Creation actually sh should draw us closer to the one who created all of these things. He's an awesome God. Amen. And to love not the world doesn't mean you're not, not to be a people person. There are some people that are so cranktified that they've not been sanctified in a long time. And they're not just sanctified, they're rude. <laughs> well, I just don't love this world, which means you don't love people. No, we're to love the people of the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him. You know, the devil was tempting me not long ago and said, man, you're not saved. You're not saved. You, 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 you just aren't saved. And, uh, and how do you know you were chosen? How do you know you were elected? And then I thought, oh, Lord, I'm, if you didn't choose me, then I'm just a whosoever will, okay? You said whosoever will. That's who I am. I have decided. Don't worry about if you've been chosen. Uh, listen, you have a choice, amen. Have you, the Bible says whosoever will, let him drink of the water of life freely. And the Bible says whosoever will, let him come. And the, uh, and the Spirit and the bride say, come. Are you a whosoever will? You may not know if you are elected. You are. You might not know if you've been chosen. You have been. But just in case you doubt it, uh, he said whosoever just come on give him a hand of praise here tonight amen 
He loves the world. And we should love our neighbors, and we should love people, and we should love the beauty. But look at 1 John 2, 15 through 16. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now here it is, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, it is not of the Father, it is of the world. Let me tell you what John Wesley said. In case you're wondering what the world is, John Wesley said, the world is anything that cools my love for Jesus. Now, there's nothing wrong with picking up golf clubs. I'm telling you, it's a, it's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's enjoyable. And it's, it's, to me, it's worship because it's, it's part of physical exercise. It's part of fellowship. It's part of a skill. Uh, and, and God is glorified when we can improve ourselves. And, but I'm going to tell you something. If, if a golf clubs keep me from church and prayer meeting and Holy Ghost revival and reading my Bible and praying, those golf clubs are going out. Oh, you golfers better say amen out there now. You thought you wanted to play with me. Uh, and I'll be preaching on whole 10. Amen. <laughs> oh, come up, Miss Wednesday night, because you're out on the golf course. Come on now. Tell me now that, we, listen, there's nothing wrong, listen, with basketball. There's nothing wrong with soccer. I think kids are, to, I think, listen, kids are couch potatoes and eating Doritos and uh, playing uh, uh, Call of Duty games at Best Buy. And you need to get them out, out of the couch, uh, out in the sun. They need to be walking, running, they need to be playing. But not they're in church, glory to God. Church is important, praise God. There are life lessons those young people are learning tonight. They will never learn kicking a football. And I'm not against sports. If I had children, they'd be in there because I need one of them to get a scholarship to pay for my retirement. That's what I'm raising Haley, helping you raise Haley for. Amen. To help our retirement, sister. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, folks. We, we've got to make some decisions, amen. Anything that cools my love for Jesus. You know, we think of backsliders as Christians living in adultery, going to bars. Now, that might eventually happen. Playing cards, gambling. Some terrible sin. But listen, backsliding is much deeper than that. It is possible to go to church, sing in the choir, even teach, pay your tithes, and still be backslidden. You don't have to go to the golf course. You don't have to go to the beach. You don't have to shack up. Uh, those are end results, but if, if it's keeping you from the Lord. But listen, you, you see, uh, one Andrew Murray said there are only two classes of Christians, soul winners and backsliders. Let me let that sink in. That didn't go over quite well. There are two classes of Christians, soul winners and backsliders. I'm going to let that hang. Because... We measure ourselves by, by what we've done, but sometimes we need to think about what we neglect to do. And we think, well, I've done a little bit of this, and I've done a little bit of that. But the Bible says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. And Andrew Murray is right. You see, it's just enough just to get you to church. Have you thought? It ain't just about you coming to church. There are people that need what we have in this church. Well, Pastor, I'm busy. I'm just we. If we're too busy to be soul win when I say soul winners, I mean souls are lost and dying and going to a burning, blazing hell. I just found out today, one of my coworkers that I work with, 47 years of age, dead. I worked with him for three and a half years. Invited him to church, talked to him about his need for the Lord, and he attended the bridge. Sometimes he lived close around Pike for. I saw him a month ago, and I made up in my mind, and I'm going to follow up with him and talk to him about coming to church. I don't know where he was. And too late now, Ricky. He's dead and gone and 47. We, we've got to be soul winners. We've got to get it all about me and us. We've got children that need to be in church. Children need to be saved. Family and nieces and nephews and loved ones. And, 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 and listen, we have to, backsliding can begin the minute we forget about our duties and obligations to a lost and a dying world. There is the sin of commission. There is the sins of omission. Things we ought to do that we neglect to do. And, and I know that's strong preaching, but anything that cools your love for Jesus, uh, anything that keeps you from prayer and soul winning in the Word of 
God, whether it's opera, baseball, television, is worldly. And it is loving the world. It is loving the world. Could be jobs. Could be legitimate things. Amen. We can't put our jobs over Jehovah Jireh. It's not Job Jireh or Biden Jireh. It's Jehovah Jireh. Amen. It's not stimulus check Jireh. Come on now. It's Jehovah Jireh meets my needs according to his riches and glory. Somebody say amen. I'm not going to love this world. Backsliders do not always go to the same location. But they always go in the same direction. And that is away from God. He loved the world. He left the work. The two go hand in hand. When the world, uh, the world, excuse me, the word forsaken said, Demas ha has forsaken me. You know that word forsaken in the Greek is two words, is three words uh, uh, put together. It means to leave down in. It is a picture of a man down in a pit with no way out. We would put it this way, to let a man down. In other words, to leave in the lurch. Demas had let Paul down. He had left him in a lurch. He had deserted the army of the Lord. He forsook the work. It goes hand in hand. Starts in the heart. Goes to the head. We begin to cool in our devotion. Cool in our dedication. And we, leave, we begin to love the world. And before you know it, we've left the work. Left the church. The church comes on bottom, bottom obligation. It comes on the bottom of the list. If I get around to it, to maybe once or twice a year, that's exactly what the devil wants. My Bible tells me that we must be on fire for God. And we must be committed to his work. He lost, he left the work. You see, it's one thing to desert the army. And I'll tell you, we get upset when we hear about deserters from the army. Come on now. You're out there fighting a the battle, these Marines and all of that, and you big Marines here. And, and, and I'll tell you, there's nothing that'll turn a Marine's stomach more than a deserter. Uh, yellow back, leave, uh, absent without leave, gone in the thick of the battle. And it's one thing to leave the world's, uh, the army of this world, but it's an even worse thing to leave the army of the church. Folks, we're, this is not a, this is not the love boat. <laughs> this is not, well, we do have love here. We love one another. And this is not a showboat. And this is not a cruise. We are on a battleship. We have to man our stations. We are in enemy territory. We're not here to love this world. We're here to defeat the, the exalt, every high thing that exalts itself against God. We need to battle up, suit up. Our responsibilities are important to teaching classes, uh, volunteering, helping out to anything we can do. And I have found that the more I'm engaged in the work of the Lord, uh, a little bit more I am on fire for him and the closer I can be to him uh, when I give myself to his work. Amen. And then he lost his witness. He went to, hey, listen, scripture says he went to Thessalonica never to be heard from again. And I want you to think of that. When he chose to love the world and forsake his Lord, he, he shamed Christ. Do you know that a, a backslidden Christian, you know what they're really saying? Think of that, that a person gets saved, gets on fire for God. And people know it. Friends know it. And then later on, they're cool. What does that say to them? Was Jesus not enough? Was his love not precious to you? What happened? Did he do something not right? Or of course not. God's always going to do what's right. Amen. He may not answer prayers the way we like, but he will always be with us no matter what happens in his path. Can I get a witness out here tonight? You're saying to the world, Jesus is not worth serving. Friends, is Jesus worth serving? Amen. People say sometimes, well, you don't know what somebody did to me. And I remember a man many years ago who could play the drums, but he wouldn't play the drums. And I needed a drummer. Well, why don't you play the drums? Because I played drums at another church and somebody hurt my feelings. Let me just stop for a minute here. Somebody hurt Jesus' feelings too. Have you had your beard pulled out? <laughs> Y'all love me tonight. I need to take a survey here. This, this, I need to make sure I'm on good terms here. 
it ain't me. I'm just, I'm just a mailman. People come in at the store sometimes, and they're like, why is it this, and why is it that? Well, I'm just, well, they get mad at me, like wearing a face mask. They're like, how dare you tell me to wear a face mask? Look, I'm just the mailman. I'm not Governor Roy Cooper. Talk to him, and I wish more of you would. You just know that I'm just telling you what the law is. Come on now. Now, where that came from, I don't know. Hallelujah. Come on now. But I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you, when we say, when we, when we get on fire for God one day and then we're cool the next day, uh, we're sending a signal. We're witnessing that Jesus is not worthy of all of our service and he's not wonderful in our service. Listen, he's worth my all. He had feelings. And if somebody hurts you because you played the drums, my friend realized Jesus hurt for you. So that you could play those drums for his glory. Give the Lord a hand of praise here tonight. To, oh, let's, let's, not, let's, not go de let's not desert in this fateful hour, COVID-19, and, and churches being shut down. And we are one breath away. They're packing the Supreme Court. Uh, abortions are out of, the, out of the park every day. Planned Parenthood is slaughtering millions. Uh, and we want to lazy and be laid out and hurt, have our feelings hurt. No, my friend, uh, there's a burning hell in front of us and our children. Uh, and we must not desert. Uh, we must. He is knocking at our door. He is wanting to come in. Uh, it's not sinful things like marrying and giving in marriage and buying lands. It is us in our heart going those stages and deserting in this critical hour. You better do what 2 John 1 and 8 says. 2 John 1 and 8 says, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Brother, I'm going to be rewarded for every sacrifice. I'm going to be rewarded when I teach that class and just two, three people show up. I'm going to be rewarded when I shake hands at the door. I'm I'm going to be rewarded. My great-grandmother, my great-grandmother took it upon herself to drag me to church. She was retired. She didn't have to deal with kids. And my mother and father never darkened the door of a church. And if they had, if my great-grandmother had not taken me to church, I would not be in that pulpit tonight. Thank God uh, that there is a reward uh, and my granny's watching tonight uh, while I preach the gospel uh, there it, it is worth uh, serving the Lord give him a hand of praise tonight and then there's the final stage the stage of destruction now I hate to preach this but there is a time we know not when a place we know not where which marks the destiny of a man to glory or despair. There is a line by us unseen, which crosses every path, which marks the boundary between God's mercy and God's wrath. And there are certain denominations that teach you can never backslide. There are certain denominations that say you can backslide and still go to heaven. But I'm telling you that there is a place where if you keep on going back, and you keep on going back, it's not that God doesn't love you. It's that your heart is going to get harder and harder. And Satan will be getting more deceptive and deceptive. If you think you can sin and just be okay with God, you are on the verge of destruction. Because that's called deception. And I know this is not running the aisle. Philippians chapter 3 verse 17 says, Brethren, follow, be the followers together of me. And mark them which... Walk so as ye have for us as an example. Verse 18, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you weeping. They are enemies to the cross of Christ. Verse 19, whose end is destruction. Whose God is their belly, their appetite. I don't feel like going to church. And I know there are times we are sick. I, listen, if you COVID positive, stay home. Stay home. I don't have to get CDC to tell me that. <laughs> I don't need a governor's edict to tell me that. If you got the flu, if you got a virus or something, stay home. We got live streaming. But if you're not sick, there's a difference between being sick and I just don't feel like going. They Listen, I didn't feel like clocking in this morning at 945, but I did bless God because I just bought a house and I got to pay that, pay that thing. Remember that nice pool I got? I got to pay 50 bucks to get it serviced every now and then. So I got to clock it. Come on, y'all love me anyway. <laughs> That's an expense for everything. <laughs> it's all right. I'm going to figure out how to do it myself and save that 50 bucks. Amen. It will work out. I got to get everything sorted out. 
I just don't feel like serving. You don't. And I know, folks, we have jobs. And listen, you're looking at a bivocational pastor. I have a 40-hour week job. Well, mostly. It's by the time you add in travel and all that. And, uh, but I'm telling you, we got to re re realize that, God, we do have jobs. We do have obligations. There are times you need to miss for things, family events, and every now and then maybe a sporting event with the kids. But, it, but on priority, we need to realize that we've got to make choices because the end is destruction. Whose God is their belly. We can't just go by what we feel like. Look at 2 Peter 2 and 22. For I, but it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow has washed to her wallowing in the mire. I, I remember, I wasn't raised on a farm. I got to come to a close. I got to, and this is going to be on a good note, by the way. But if you can make it past this point, we'll be good. But I remember when we, <laughs> Granny used to have some hogs, and they would snort and they would just wallow in that mud. It's the most funniest thing you'd ever seen. It stank. It was just terrible. And boy, they'd go out there and shoot one, and we'd have cook pig picking. Amen. Hallelujah. Think of the hog wallowing in the mud. And that's what a backslidden Christian is really doing. You're just swallowing right over in the mud and the muck of this world. We there is destruction. There is a, a judgment coming. There is a time where if we die in our sins, all of the righteousness that a man has done, if he dies in wickedness, it will not be remembered the righteous which he has done. And the same opposite. For all that the wickedness a man does, if he dies in righteousness, his wickedness will not be remembered. Uh, my friend, there is a judgment coming. Uh, we must all stand before the judge. The rapture is about to take place. We must not give place to offense. Uh, we must not let the world cool our, our devotion. Uh, we must fall on our knees. Uh, we must say, oh, Lord Jesus, I am yours fully, completely completely, unconditionally. Lord, you don't have to answer prayer like I want you to answer it. I'm still going to love you. You don't have to do things like I want you to do because you're Lord and I'm not. And oh, by the way, he's got a plan bigger than us and sometimes we can't see what he's up to. Amen, somebody. He's a lovely Lord, a worthy Lord. He is worth everything. We ought to praise him, serve him, and love him with all that's in our heart. Let us not be lukewarm or cold. Let us be hot and on fire for God. Let us not go the way of Demas. Let us not go the way of desertion and end up in destruction. This is eternal eternity we're talking about. Let us go all in for our precious Lord. Can you say amen? I'll tell you, to the backslider, God loves you. And if you have backslidden just a little bit, or if you've gone all the way down and headed fast to destruction, let me tell you something. This message tonight is a message of love. God loves us. He wants, he calls out to those, those Demases. You don't have to leave the Lord. He wants you to be saved. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 14. And we've quoted this many times in the Pentecostal church. It says, uh, Jeremiah, oh, turn, O oh backsliding children, saith the Lord, for what I am married to you. And when you read that, God is married to the backslider to a certain degree until the, until the final person walks away. But in those initial state, God is likening you to, to the one that, now, now I want to tell you, you married, you know how that goes. You love your spouse and you don't want anything but good to happen to them. Amen. You're married. <laughs> Hello. <clears throat> you look at somebody like brother Ray Meeks, who his wife had no idea who she was or who he was. But every single day, week after week, year after year. And even now, his heart longs to feed her one more time. That's marriage. Amen? That is what you want your children to, to, to be a part of, not these fly-by-night stuff. But I'll tell you, God loves the backslider. He's married to you. He's calling out to you. Oh, baby, where are you? You know your husband loves you. You know I want to do I mean, Don't go to Jerome Green. <laughs> 
He might can give you a good time for a little while, but I'm going to be the one that's going to be there. I'm going to be the one. I love, God loves the backslider. And, and <clears throat> you know, when a word is repeated twice um, in the Jews, it was to bring emphasis. See, they didn't, in, in Hebrew, they didn't have exclamation points or question marks. They didn't have uh, what we call punctuation. So to punctuate a thought, the Jews would repeat a word. So that's why many times Jesus would say, verily, verily, right? Or truly, truly, as it's a modern translation. Uh, and sometimes Jesus looked and said, Simon, Simon. Uh, and there's even uh, one scripture where Jesus said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. So when a word is repeated twice, that is the exclamation point. And uh, Ezekiel chapter 18, and I don't have it in the notes here, but the prophet said, turn yourself. Turn yourself. God was calling out to rebellious people and to a backsliding people. Turn yourself. You want to know how God feels about the backslider? He puts an exclamation point. Turn yourself away from that. Come to me. And then if the word is repeated three times, it's even greater exclamation. For example, holy, holy, holy. Boy, that's more than exclamation. That is off the chain. Or even whoa, whoa, whoa. Revelation chapter 8 or Jeremiah 22. Earth, earth, earth. Uh, Ezekiel 21 overturn 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 and there is one in song of songs chapter 6 in verse 13 there is one scripture where a phrase in all of the bible it's not twice it's not three times this is the one scripture where you'll find four repeating of the same thought and what is those four words return return <laughs> O shulamite return 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 unto him. You know, one of the things when in my life, when I would slide back a, a lot of times, I would just feel the love of God. Just return. Just come back to me. Return, return, return. He wants us to return. So, what's the path back to return? I gave you the four stages. I said the first stage is devotion. Second stage is decision. Third one is desertion. And then finally, destruction. So how do we return? Let's go back to stage one. Let's go back to devotion. Amen? Come on and lift your hands tonight and be devoted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, yes. I read about this, and I'm closing as the kids come on in. In fact, I'll let them get in and get settled because I want you to hear this. Now, you may say, Pastor, I'm, I'm right on up there with the Lord. I'm right up there. Number one, do you know somebody who isn't? Then pray for them. Amen. How y'all with me tonight? Pray for them. And then number two, if you're right where you need to be with the Lord, the Bible does say something about he that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Remember, Demas prayed with Paul, preached with Paul, planted with Paul, and still found himself in destruction. So none of us have touched heaven's shores just yet. If you ever read the Pilgrim's Progress, you'll understand all that a person goes through. But God is faithful. But I close with this tonight. Years ago, the crown prince of India gave to Queen Victoria the most precious thing he had. He was a child prince, and he gave to the queen of England at the time the coroner diamond. The coroner diamond is the most famous diamond of all history. Do you know how big it was when the, when the prince gave it to the queen? 186 carat diamond. It is the world's most flawless diamond, still in the queen's tower, as far as I know, to this day. And so when the crown prince was a little boy, he gave that diamond to her as a gift from India. But years later, when he was a full-grown adult in midlife, he made another trip back to London. He asked for the treasurer to bring out the corner diamond that he gave when he was a little boy. And so they gave it to him. He went before Queen Victoria. He said, my queen, I want to give again to you the gift I gave to you. You see, when I gave it to you the first time, I was a little boy. I didn't really know all that this meant. But now I'm a full-grown man. And I know you're a wonderful queen. And you've been so good to our country. 
And now that I know more, and now that I really know what this is all about and how valuable this is, just one more time, I want to give it back to you. And if you and I will just keep that same spirit before the Lord. Oh, God, I served you when I was younger. I served you five years ago. Pastor, come on up. But I want to give my life back to you all over again. Can you just lift your hand and do that? Will you give your car and a diamond back to him? Lord, we're not those who are, will draw back. We're of those who draw near. We're not going to backslide, and we're going to reclaim the backslider. We're going to love the backslider. We're going to, oh, if you've backslidden or have, or even a little bit, we love you. God loves you. Uh, return, 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 return. If you're watching on live stream, if you're watching a rebroadcast on YouTube, uh, return. He loves you. Uh, don't forfeit his plan for your life for the, the little things of this world. Would you stand with me tonight? Would you stand with me? Sing that little chorus. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And he's my Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue. Come on, give, give the diamond of your worship. Give it back to him tonight. Oh, God, keep us near to you. And he is Lord. He is Lord. And he has risen from the dead. Oh, and he's my Sunday morning was who's that knocking at my door. Tonight the Lord is talking to us about backsliding. I wonder what the Lord is trying to say to us. Open the door. He said, if you'll open it, I'll come in. You heard it said, sin will take you further than you want to go. Amen. Listen very carefully. Sin will keep you long and you want to stay and sin will cost you more than you want to pay I got a sermon I've never preached it's the devil can't deliver he promises things and as a young man he promised me some things and I found out he couldn't deliver I've never preached that sermon but whatever the devil has promised you, that'll preach. The devil can't deliver. That's right. Come on. And as Pastor Ricky was preaching, I was thinking about a story years ago. This this bird of prey, now an eagle kills, eats what it kills. This bird swooped down. It was winter time, and it was the flesh was floating down the river. And he puts his claws into it, and he's eating that. And he continues to float down the river, and he knows there's a waterfall down there. Yet he's enjoying that so much, he just keeps eating at it. Then he hears the approaching danger of the waterfall. He says, I'll take one more bite. Mm. He goes down to take that bite, flaps those massive wings, and nothing. He flaps his wings again. He can't get up. He looks down, and his talons 
they become frozen into that meat. And all of a sudden, as he tries frantically to break loose and fly away, he plummets to his death. That's what sin will do for you. And God is wanting to break in on us in <laughs> yes. a big way. And the world has its lures. And when you hear the Lord knocking, that's the time to get your heart right. Charlie, I'm so proud of you. Amen. Charlie heard the Lord knocking <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> Come on up here, Charlie. Come up. I want you to testify. Hallelujah. Cause Amen. Charlie made a powerful, powerful move. Let me tell you, if you don't get right with the Lord, you're going the wrong way. And I'm telling you one thing, I was going the wrong way. <laughs> and my wife knew it. And I'll tell you what, you ain't going to get better than the Lord, ever. Hallelujah. He's number one in my life. He's going to be number one. And the devil keeps on trying with me, but he ain't going to win. He's losing. Hey, Think man. He is Lord. Anybody that needs to repent, praise God. Boy, get he... things right. Make Jesus Lord. Boy, he he is, Lord, is Lord or he is not your Savior. He said, if he's not, I'm not your Lord, I'm not your Savior. He said, I'm standing at the door knocking. He said, if you're here, open the door. He said, if you're lukewarm, I spew you out of my mouth. He said, if you're hot, you're in pursuit of me. He said, if you're cold, I can deal with you. But if you are lukewarm and you're satisfied where you are and you're not progressing in God, you're in trouble. Let's make him Lord. Oh, he Anybody needs Lord. to come to the altar and repent, be bold enough like Charlie was. Hey, Lord, I'm coming. Make you Lord. Hallelujah. And he has risen from, from the, the dead. dead. 